the first thing that you would maybe want to do is look at an element of order four. So this is an element of order four, right? A four cycle has order four, like a in general, an n cycle has order n, right? Um, but this is not an element of A8, right? Because by this, that decomposes into an odd number of transpositions. So it's not in A8. But we can append it with something to turn it into something that's like kind of also got order four, but is in A8. So can we think of like a way to do that? There are like a couple of different ways. We could, so this is an odd element, but if you take the product of an odd element and an odd element, you get a, just an even element. This is like product not in the numbers, right? But the product in SN, right? Because product is number of transpositions, right? But that adds the number of transpositions, odd plus odd, which is even, right? So if we multiply this, combine this with another odd element, we get an even element. So what kind of odd element can we multiply this by to maintain its order forness? No, that's the identity. That has order one. What about like, what about just a single transposition? Kind of. Can't, it's got to be disjoint from this. But we're in A8, so we're in a place that's big enough. We've got like a number of different choices. We could take 5, 6. Right? So this has order 4. This has order 2. These are disjoint. And we know that anytime you have disjoint cycles, the order of the whole thing is the LCM of the length of the cycles, right? So the order of this is the LCM of 4 and 2. It's the order 4, right? Now, you could put a 4 cycle here too, right? And perhaps since this is A8, you know, we could do that. But we could just use a 2 cycle as well. All of this can be happening in, in A6, in fact. Um, so this is an element of A8. And like I said, it's order 4. But if it's order 4, it generates a cyclic subgroup of order 4. So let's generate that cyclic subgroup. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 generating. So that's going to have the identity. That, so that's like this to the 0 power. It's going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's like this to the first power, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if we were, to, we were to like really spell out kind of what's going on here, maybe name this guy sigma, right? And then this one right here would be the sigma to the 0. This would be sigma to the 1. And then the next one will be sigma squared, and the last one will be sigma cubed. So what's sigma squared? Um, uh, well, I'm, six, five. I'm trying to put it in the but order where it's like five, six. one goes first, right? Six, so, yeah, so the 5, 6 is going to disappear when you square it. Yeah. Because when you compose 5, 6 with itself, that's gone, right? That turns into the identity. So we're gonna, all we have to do is really square this, right? But we square a cycle by counting through two at a time. So we go one goes to three. So one goes to three. And then three goes back to one. OK. And then likewise, two will go to four. So two goes to four. Four goes back to two. So we just count through two at a time. And then nominally, we do that here too, right? So five goes to five. Right, because we just like count through two at a time, but it's not that long, right? Six goes to six. it's the same thing, right? And then let's see, we've got one more element here. Maybe we'll put it on this line, and what would that be? So that would be sigma cubed. That's one four. One four three two. That's right. One four three two. And then five six is back. And then five six is back. And that's because, well, we count through three at a time, one, two, three. But also, like, we know this is a four cycle, so sigma cubed is the same thing as sigma inverse. So we just could count in reverse. That's kind of neither here nor there. It's the same thing, right? And then five, six, well, 
I mean, you could count through three, right? Uh, what, how would it go? So we go uh, one, two, three. It goes back to six. Okay, so anyway, this one is sigma cubed. Okay, so there is our um, subgroup of order four that is cyclic. And then we could write down one that's not cyclic as well. There are a bunch of choices. I think maybe the lowest hanging fruit choice would be a, a, a subgroup generated by the following two elements. One, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. Those two elements. So we know that it's not cyclic because this is definitely not a power of this, right? And vice versa. So we could rewrite this as, well, we've got the identity. We've got one, two, three, four. We've got five, six, seven, eight. And then finally, we've got the product of those. But the product of those, since those are disjoint, you just kind of write them after each other, right? There's like, there's like really nothing to do there.